from my personal observation, I would say there is a different level of <laughs> gold, gold, digger. yeah, gold yeah, diggers. Yeah. Gold yeah. diggers are not all created equal. Yes. Right? <laughs> good morning, everyone, and good morning, Elena. Good morning, Joe. You're looking beautiful as always. Thanks very much. You look not too shabby yourself. Oh, thank you. Now I'm blushing. Guys, you are in for a super treat because this is our first inaugural edition of He Said, She Said with Elena and Joe. Okay, guys, uh, the first edition here, we're going to take the bull by the proverbial horns and we're going to talk about what we think is one of the absolute biggest topics out there in this world of international dating, specifically you guys that are looking at finding your other half in Ukraine here. So we're calling this episode, Is It True? No Money, No Honey in Ukraine. A little bit about my beautiful co-host, Elena, before we get the show started here. You know, I think what's invaluable, Elena, about um, your insights on this topic is you're not only a beautiful Ukrainian lady that grew up in Ukraine, but also you lived abroad for, what was it, 12 years. Yeah. So you've experienced life in the West for a long time, uh, but yet you are still at heart a Ukrainian lady, and you, of course, know your people and you know the culture. So. Really, you're able to give a, a holistic view on this topic uh, like few other people can, I think. Well, I hope so. <laughs> I'll try my best, guys. <laughs> she will. And, and so, that said, let's jump into this. Um, I mean, what do you think? No money, no honey? Is it true? Uh, well, Joe, I think it's not entirely true to say no money, no honey just in Ukraine. I think it's all over the world. You can. It's a universal uh, truism, no money, no honey. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, so you're agreeing, no money, no honey. You're agreeing with that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, you know, and that's pretty, uh, you know, our show is all about being raw and real, guys. We're never going to sugarcoat anything for you. We're going to give it straight up. So, yeah, it, you know, let's face it. Uh, the top two needs of every woman in the world is safety and security and love. And sometimes it's love first and safety and security, you know, uh, second and the other, other way, you know. And my personal opinion, love to hear what you think about this, but I think because of tough economic times in Ukraine, former USSR days, basically for generations, it's been a tough go yeah, for Ukrainian been. Russian people. Yeah. So I think safety and security I see as need number one for most women here and need number two is love. So. No money, no honey. Well, yeah, it's the man's job also in this culture to take care of the family, to be the provider, bring home the bacon, right? Yeah, pretty much, yep. Yeah. Let, let's look at it from this way. Maybe no money, no honey, okay, it applies, it's a universal uh, truism. But would you say the scale is different? Like, for example, well, let, let me preface it with this. Do you think there's more gold diggers, we'll, we'll call it, you know, in the Western world, like Canada, America, you know, Australia, UK, or in Ukraine? Let's, what do you think about that? Well, I'm not any um, scientist, you know, I never studied or researched this subject, but from my personal observation, I would say there is a different level of <laughs> gold, gold, digger. yeah, gold yeah, diggers. Yeah. Gold yeah. diggers are not all created equal. Yes. Right? So, yeah, in Ukraine and in the West. I mean, if you take the Western gold digger, you know, she just um, is going to be a to whole totally different level, right? She's going to ask you for some expensive holidays, luxurious lifestyle, you know, the villas on a beach and uh, expensive cars and everything, you know, and it's highly influenced by the media as well. You know, we have all the shows, you know, we have all the... Uh, Housewives of Beverly Hills. Housewives of Beverly Hills. Even Hills. Vancouver they had the episode. Yeah, you know, the term WAG is very, uh, very highly promoted. For those of you guys who doesn't know what uh, WAG stands for, it's wife and girlfriends of celebrities and footballers. So that's what we, what girls in the West, they strive to become, right? They all, all want to be wags. Uh, basically, a little luxurious life, you know, travel all over the world, you know, holiday and going to spas and, you know, riding expensive cars and this is pretty much, yeah, mm -hmm. what we're really looking for. So, am I understanding you to say, basically, uh, Western gold diggers are expensive and yeah. maybe now you're about to compare it to Ukrainian gold digger, maybe they're a little bit more affordable. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> is yeah. that where you're going with that? Yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> yeah. And it's probably bad to say, you know, Ukrainian girls are gold diggers. But, you know, from what I figured, you know, from the clients' feedbacks, you know, from the people that I met here and they shared their experience and stories, I figured that they, we have two types, two types of gold diggers, you know. One of the girls, they do it professionally, you know, they join the marriage or dating agency, they, they have these Photoshop pictures, you know, they flawless profiles, you know, they everything like you want and they wouldn't mind your age, they wouldn't mind your look, even some some guys say they don't have the profile picture and they would still have a lot of messages, like 20 messages basically per hour just bombarding them, offering them to, you know, love and care for these guys, which is probably like 40 years older than herself. And uh, then you have the girls that are sort of desperate, I should say, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say desperate, you, you know, but it's probably more nicer to say in need, you know, we have, as we know, the economic situation is pretty bad here. So if she's got a child or if she doesn't have a good income, she might be a little bit in need, you know. And uh, you guys might read it as a gold digger, but it's not really a gold digger, you know. If you, if you keep it in mind that she's in need, it doesn't mean that she's waiting here desperately to, for you to come and save her life, you know, because life is here, I mean, it's tough, but it's not impossible, you know. It's not like it used to be after the USSR collapse and everybody, everybody was trying to flee this, the land of milk and honey. <laughs> but now, now everything is shifting, you know, we're going slowly, but surely to the West, you know, and we, it's not as bad as it used to be, so yeah. Yeah, I would agree with you. It's important guys know that uh, women here in Ukraine are not desperate to get out of Ukraine. Yeah. Even though times are tough, you know what? Uh, Ukrainian people stick together. Families stick together. Friends stick together. They lend each other money. They, they share flats together. Uh, they cook simple foods. They get by and they, they make their best of it. And guys, you need to know these ladies, especially the beautiful ones, they have a lot of options in Ukraine. They don't need you. They really don't. When you come, you'll see that. Um, you know, so there is, on the one hand, the gold digger in Ukraine that look, is looking to get out of Ukraine and looking mm -hmm. for a better life for the wrong reasons. Yep. But most uh, good girls in Ukraine are looking to stay in Ukraine and they're not looking for you to come and rescue uh, her. So, so it, it's a complete uh, fallacy. It's a cre complete myth that, uh, you know, women are looking to get out of Ukraine. Yeah, that's true. Not everybody, even my girlfriends, you know, I ask, and some of them, they wouldn't go across the pond, you know, to leave, because they like to stay close to their family, they like to stay in their country, you know, where they understand, no point to go to U.S. and work there as a cleaner or waitress, you know, like, no, not everybody strives for that, so, yeah. It's a good point, because most people now know that, you know, America isn't, a, you know, all about the American dream. It's yeah. difficult, and when you immigrate to America, they know that while they leave their family, their friends, their yeah. country, their language, everything that they've known, and they go to a scary world, and boy, uh, they're not gonna go until they really trust the man. That's another big point, right? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. you really need to earn her trust before she'll go with you to your country. And to earn her trust, you're gonna come here and you're gonna be true to yourself, you know? If you come here, just be honest, you know, do not try to be something you're not, you know, do not try to flaunt something you don't have, do not try to impress the girl before you even know her, because you might, you might attract the wrong one, and that's, because everybody that I talk to, you know, they all say, I want a girl to like me for me, you know, not for what I have, okay, so if you want to, if, if you want her to like you for you, come and try to impress her with your intelligence, with your respect, with your good manners, with your whatever it might be, but just don't, just try to keep the material side a little bit for later, you know, you can always have a time to take it further, you know, to to sweep her off her feet. Mm -hmm. Good advice, good advice. I mean, it's important to the guys be themselves, right? Absolutely. I mean, how many times have we seen clients come and we always say, be yourself, but we see them misrepresent Yes. Their life, their lifestyle, their wealth, yeah. or their income level, yeah. their social level. Yeah. And, you know, guys, the truth always eventually comes out. And then, you know, what have you got? You've attracted the wrong kind of woman, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah.
Don't do that. That's yeah. a big, big mistake. Yeah. Elena, how about we do a comparison of how does the good girl behave when she's uh, dating a Western man or any man for that matter? Yeah. And then how does the, the, the bad girl or the opportunist, the gold digger, how does she behave? How do they compare? So, Because I think if guys really understand how is a, a normal good girl in Ukraine culture, when they yeah. realize how pragmatic, how... Uh, simple they are, how non-demanding, how yeah. easy going they are, yeah. then they'll be able to see that, okay, going shopping for Prada and, and stuff like that, hinting to buy a new iPhone or something, that is not a good girl in Ukraine. That's yeah. not how you're taught as a little girl, right? Yeah, totally not, no, not like this. Uh -huh. yeah, I think the good girl from the very beginning, you know, she'll be very casual, very laid back, you know, nothing, she ain't going to be too affectionate, too cheesy, you know, if, if because we're just not like this, you know, normally we, we taught, you know, just to sit and wait for men to come and ask you, you know, to ask you out, to offer you to the hand, you know, to marry him and all that. And to, it's true. To, the, to ask you for a date, yeah, so yeah. it's not like we... And then choosing the restaurant, for example, that's the man's job. Yeah. She doesn't lead the man and say, let's go to this restaurant. The good yeah. girl, right? Well, normally, yeah, but now everything is changing and shifting, so it's probably this the younger generation, they're a little bit different, but yeah, the older generation, true. they're a little bit more old fashioned, I'd say, yeah. True, true. So, so uh, back to the good girl. How does she behave on, on the date? So the man uh, says where to go. She doesn't yeah. take him to an expensive restaurant for $150. No, generally Normally, speaking. Yeah, generally speaking, no, yeah. Right. And yeah. does she on the first date or second or third or fourth date, did, would she suggest to go shopping for, you know, shoes or expensive purse, Prada or something? No, absolutely no, not. I think it's even uncomfortable, you know, for us. If, if someone will ask you to, on third date, okay, let's go and buy you some Prada shoes or purse. I mean, it's, it's a little bit uh, weird, you know, if we don't do this. I mean, we just... Yeah. Yeah, you don't. In fact, let me ask you this question. Let's say it's a third date and Ukrainian man, yeah. he, she's on a date with the Ukrainian man um, and he takes her to a very um, modest restaurant, which would be normal situation in Ukraine. Uh, would a Ukrainian woman on the third date, fifth date ever ask the Ukrainian man to go shopping or buy anything? No, absolutely not. Wouldn't it's not have. even, yeah, it's not even a possibility here. Yeah. Even the, probably the richest Ukrainian man, it's just not in our culture, not in our minds. Yeah, yeah. But then again, I can't speak for everybody, you know, maybe time changes, hey, I mean, Ukraine and Ukrainians change, so yeah, could yeah. be. And, but now one thing is, um, she could be testing you, right? The good girl. Yeah. So just because, uh, guys, if, uh, she invites you out uh, or, or you find yourself shopping and she's kind of subtly hinting, oh, I love this purse or these pair of shoes or something. She might be testing you to see if you're a strong man, if you're capable of supporting a future family with her, right? Could be, yeah, but normally it, it just comes across as distasteful, you know, mm. you, someone you hardly know, you know, you just say, oh, I like that Prada purse, I mean, it's just, it's, it's humiliating to us, you know, that's mm. the woman, like, we don't do such a thing, no. Yeah, but for example, mm -hmm. um, you have a friend, and your friend went to another country with a man, yes. a foreign man, yeah. and maybe describe that situation, and see, that made her nervous. She, for example, might test a future man, foreign man, because... Right? Yeah. Share a little bit that example. Yeah. So basically, one of my best friends, she met a French man, and she went to France, and um, he was busy doing his job, and he was he, she she had a little bit of free time on her hands, while staying there for one week. So, you know, and she decided to go to Paris and see all the museum and shops and you know the life in in France. And he didn't even ask her if she's hungry, if she got any money on her to buy a croissant or coffee. So he was totally like, and it's hard to believe, you know, because she, he paid for her tickets to come to see him, to be with him, right? To stay in his place. So yeah, that's a bit strange. Men are different as well. Mm -hmm. So he was, a, this was a tight wad man. Yeah, and, it seems and, like it, yeah. But that, that made, her, made her think, because I remember her texting me on Weber and she said, is that normal? You know, he, he didn't even ask me. You go into, because I believe it was three hours from Paris and he didn't even ask her, do you have money like to 
to buy yourself a train ticket or anything. And I think yeah. it's a little bit strange as well. If you're going to invite someone, you know, girl from another country, I know like automatically you think they have money, but it's nice to, it's nice just as a man to ask your lady, right? To offer like, okay, maybe she doesn't need it, but you know, at least you sh it shows that you care, right? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a second point, guys. You, you need to show that you care and don't be a tightwad. You know, no lady anywhere wants yeah. a cheap man. And I think doubling back to the main point is uh, this friend of yours in the future, could you see her maybe testing a man by inviting him, doing something financially to test him to make sure she's not going to fly to his country and uh, he doesn't even look after her? Yeah, well, I don't know, but I don't blame her, you know. I mean, it happened to her, so yeah, I don't blame the girl. I mean, it's strange, you know. <laughs> yeah, but generally speaking, guys, yeah, um, no lavish gifts, no shopping. That's not a good girl. Yeah. And it's important, guys, that you understand what is the difference between how, uh, what, how they're raised in Slavic uh, culture, in Ukraine culture, to behave with the man on a date. And just to behave with the man. Yeah. It's not... Uh, what you experience with these opportunists. So just know that. Mm -hmm. yeah. In fact, um, l let me ask you this. Does the Ukraine woman, does she in fact help uh, her man save money? Oh, absolutely, yeah. The woman, but I, I believe it's not on dating stage. It's a little bit further in a relationship where, you know, when you live together, when you're married. Yeah, that's when it comes, when the ladies, you know, she, she treats your money as her money, you know. So you try to save money and she understands it, you know, when she tries to help you in that. Yeah, she doesn't ask you for expensive, expensive gifts. In fact, the opposite, you know, she tries to ask you, okay, she'd say, no, no, I don't need it, you know. I'm, they all try to be humble, you know, and sweet. So, yeah, that's, that's how our good moms taught us you know but <laughs> yeah because everything comes from the family at the end of the day right that's our first school that's where we, we, we learn everything before we go to the world right? <laughs> it's a good point because um, one of the top love languages of most ladies very high on the love language scale is gifts care and gifts yeah right let's jump into that for a minute shall we all right so you know the other thing is you know, because times are tough in Ukraine, it's not too difficult to actually turn a girl that's a normal Ukrainian good girl into what appears to be a gold digger who's asking you for a little bit lavish present, like a purse and shopping for a skirt and shoes. Not a fortune, yeah. but... Well. Yeah, I agree with you, Joe, yeah. Because, you know, the... Um not going to always give any gifts to the lady, but then you have to be sensible, you know, not to go overboard. Like you don't go, you, you ain't going to give her iPhone 10 on a third date, right? It just is, doesn't make sense. And normally the girl, the good girl, she wouldn't accept it. But she might, who knows? Like if she wants, if she really badly wants the iPhone, she might say, why not? You know, if he's giving me, which means it's, it's not a big deal for him and it's good for me because I want it and I can't afford it. So yeah, that's how that's how they can turn the good girl into the gold digger. Yeah, it's. I mean, I personally, I wouldn't accept it. I think it's nothing, you know, for someone I don't know that well. But uh, who knows? You know, everybody's different, so you can't really judge. You know, all of them. Everybody's different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you're spot on. You know, guys, you need to know that uh, you know the good girl. She doesn't want you to buy lavish gifts like iPhones, iPads. Uh, in fact, she feels like indebted to you if you buy expensive gifts on a couple, two, three dates, right? Yeah. And, and the good girl doesn't want that. It makes her feel uncomfortable. But, you know, gifts are a very popular love language in Ukraine. So she wants you to buy chocolates and flowers and, and uh, gifts for the children. That's very important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, but, you know, 20, 20, 30, 40 dollar gifts for the children, a doll or you know, a, a, a toy race car if it's a boy or something like this. Uh, it's important. Yeah. I think it shows that you're generous, that you care about her, that you're not afraid, you know, that you care about her child if she's got a two, nothing wrong with it. Just don't go overboard, you know, just... I know you try to impress her, like, you, you're gonna give, bring the world, you know, and give this to this, to give it to this girl, you know, but uh, just be sensible, you know, stay... Yeah. Stay humble and stay modest. You can always have time to impress her yeah. later. Alina, let me ask you, what do you think about broke men that try to come to Ukraine okay. uh, to find a lady? What are their chances on the topic of no money, no honey? 
Well, I think if you're broke, why, why bother, you know, just stay in your country? Because it's going to cost you money, whether you're going to come with the agency or on your own, you're going to pay for the plane ticket, you're going to pay for rent, for your dates, for the gifts, so it's going to cost you some, some amount of money, right? If you're a little bit tight, if you have a difficult time yourself, probably it's not the best time to bring another human being in your life. So just until the situation gets better and no offense, I mean, it's normal. We all experience ups and downs in life, you know, like it, it's not like I'm above someone else. I mean, I'm like just pretty much the same human as you. I, I understand and I can relate. So if, if you have a little bit hard time on your own, it's probably not the best time to start a family or to bring the girl from another country because all the visa application and tickets and planes and if it's a child, it's going to make, make you spend even more. So, I think those are wise words from Elena. Um, I would piggyback and add on top of that. It's not a, 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 a cheap journey. <laughs> it's actually an expensive one because yeah. you, you've got to come back and water the flower, as I always say. You've got to come back even once you meet your half, you know, a lady that you're trying to win over. Um, you've got to come back many times to earn her trust before she's ever going to marry you and fly back home. Yeah. And the biggest stumbling block you're going to have is if you can't take care of her and her family, her children, child, or future, your future family, mm, I'd hazard to say you're not going to win her trust because if you don't have that financial means, uh, that's the huge, huge uh, need of the Ukrainian lady. Let's face it, if she wants a man that can't take care of the family, uh, Sorry, but there's a lot of Ukrainian men that are strong men, handsome men. Yeah. They speak their own language. You don't have to move anywhere, you know, to learn their language, to try to find a job there. So you can, they have their family and their support system, you know. Yeah. So yeah, it's easy here. Yeah, so uh, my, my advice to you, if you can't support the family yet, don't even start this journey, really. You're yeah. just going to end up, uh, I think, uh, unhappy because you're going to meet somebody and at the end of the day, you won't win her over. Listen, uh, we covered it. We tried to cover it as best we could, right? Yes. Yes. And uh, we hope you got a lot out of this first episode. And let's give you a little teaser of the upcoming episode, episode two uh, of He Said, She Said with Elaine and Joe. We're entitling it. Um, what are we entitling it? Um, dating in Ukraine. Are you looking catch and release or catch and keep? Big difference, hey, Elena? Yes. Yes. So, guys, we're going to cover this topic in depth because, really, we see it as being one of the biggest mistakes that you guys are making out there that are not being successful. So, it's very important you understand uh, this topic. So, we're going to cover that next time on He Said, She Said with Elaine and Joe. So until next time, one last thing guys, uh, please put your comments in the comment section in YouTube below this video. Let us know what are your big burning questions, uh, whether you're still on this journey or if you're in a relationship with the Ukrainian lady, what are your biggest relationship challenges? We would like to address it for you, okay? So we, we might even do an episode just for you. Yeah, we'll try. We'll try. Okay, hope you enjoyed that guys. Bye-bye, see you next time. Thanks for watching guys, see you later, bye. bye, -bye.